It's at the bottom here on this Articulate 360 mm -hmm. panel that comes up. It's at the very bottom. You click launch, or it is a website, rise.articulate.com, right there. And you can bookmark that and then log in every time when it comes up. Okay. And it will tell you that Chrome is the preferred tool, or the preferred browser. Okay. It doesn't work very well in Internet Explorer. You'll get an error along the bottom that says you're not in a supported browser. We're going to click this little button right here. It says new course. And we're going to make a blank course because I don't have any templates. So we get this course thing, right? I mean, what? Okay. So you can see this is where the table of contents would go. And there's nothing here right now. Here's where you would write a description for your course. And literally, you could just type right in there. Boom. Okay. Same with the course title. You just type right in there. Over here, you have an author. So I can choose to hide this author or I can show my name if I care. In a corporate environment, most of the time, if clients are going to see it or other employees are going to see it, I hide the author. If it's something that I want people to know that I made, like that video editing course, then I would show my name. If you were creating a demo you know, for your portfolio, you probably want to show your name. Now, once you do that, you have the ability in here. I can type something there. Here, we'll just call this right here. Um, topic one. And I did the caps. That was not something that it did by default. When I hit enter, it creates an item. And it wants me to add content or delete it. Okay. Now, the other thing I can do here is I can put a heading here. Heading one. Now, see what it says? It's really small, but it says shift plus enter to add a section. Do you see that at the bottom? Mm -hmm. So if I'm here and I hit shift enter, it creates this heading and I can put it, I can move that around. So that's how you can create sections within your table of content, contents, okay? By the way, you'll notice there is no save button. If I go back here, there's my, there's my rise site right there. And I come back in, it's all here. You don't even have, you don't have to save. Okay. So you guys understand how the TOC, the TOC table of contents works? By the way, that is a term you probably want to have in the back of your head is a TOC, table of contents, if you've never heard it. Before we move on here, let's talk about what's up here at the top. We have settings and we have export. Share, review, and preview are not available. Why are they not available? Because there's no content. There's nothing to share. There's nothing to review, and there's nothing to preview at the moment. Okay? So let's click settings. This is where you can do a little bit of customization. Nice. So I can add that logo. Remember there was an FIS logo there? This is where you would do that. You would upload a logo right here. And it opens up a little thingy here, no problem. We just grab a graphic and throw it in there. Cover photo. This is the big photo that goes across the top that you saw, okay? So if you put a picture in there that's really big, it's gonna crop it appropriately to fit in that spot. And that appropriately may not be where you want it to be cropped. So just be aware of that. that that's, you either have to crop it yourself or you have to put it in there and let it do its thing. What, do you know what the aspect ratio is for the cover photo? I would say 16 by nine. Okay. At least minimum. It's probably 16 wide, but not nine high. It's probably like six or seven. Okay. So I, so it's probably, it's going to crop some of it off. So you might get heads chopped a little bit, you know, something like that, or you might get somebody chopped with their neck. If, they're, if it's a big picture of a person, you just got to pay attention to that. Okay. Also, if you have a small picture, you know, that's a low res small picture and you blow, it'll blow it up and it'll look like crap. It'll pixelate it. <laughs> yeah. So you'll want to try and find an image. You might have to try a couple of different images. I've had that problem before. Okay. So now customizing the theme. If I click that, this is where I can pick my colors. So if I don't like this orange, and I want a blue, I can put blue in there. It changes this, it changes the line, it changes your little buttons. 
you know, different things that show up in the, in the course, your, those, that continue button, it would change that color as well. You do have the ability to do a custom color, which means you can put in that, remember that hex number we talked about in the graphic design course? And that was the hex number representing the RGB color. You would put that in here and click done. Or you move around your color circle and you pick your color, right? As I move this around, it's gonna change my colors. And notice that it's changing the hex number down there as I do it. Okay? That makes sense to everybody? Yep. Yeah. All right. Now we have fonts. So if you don't like the default fonts, and you can see these are serif fonts. Remember we talked about fonts that were serif and sans serif. So the serif is the little lines that are on the fonts. Like when you're reading a book, a printed book has serif fonts. But a lot of times when you're online, you get this like oh, it's up here, like an Arial or something like that, and there's no serif. It's cleaner. You can drop these fonts down. These are not the fonts that are on your computer. These are internet fonts that are Google fonts, basically, which means anybody that opens up the Rise site will have access to those fonts. Because if you create a website and you build that website with a font that is on your computer and somebody else opens it up on their browser and they don't have that font, they're going to get Times New Roman or Courier New or some god awful font because the browser doesn't know what to do. So it's using fonts that everybody has. Typically, we choose railway as a heading and Roboto as the body. And that's what it ends up looking like. And that is just us. You are not required to follow that, but that's what we use. And then there is a save button here. And then there's a little thing here that do you want the animations to come in as the learner scrolls, do you want stuff to animate in? So if you want your stuff to look alive, you can put it on, on or you can turn it off. Okay. Some navigation choices. Do you want the sidebar to be open, closed? Do you want there to be the, the navigation? Do you want it to be free or restricted? So, I mean, these are the same things that we've talked about with storyline, right? With can they jump through the menu? Do you want there to have be the search bar? Do you want to mark lessons as completed? Do you want to be counting the lessons? Do you want previous and next buttons? Do you want to be able to change the playback speed of videos? All that kind of stuff. Translations. If you're not dealing with translations, don't worry about this. I don't even know how this works. I've not used it. Okay. <laughs> Labels. Now, remember in Storyline, we could change like what the button said, like where it said resources, and we can change that to be job aid or training guide, you can do that here as well, okay? So like there was that, there's that button that showed up at the beginning that said start course. You can change it to say begin or something like that. So you don't have to call it a course if you don't want people to think of your stuff as a course. So you have the ability to change stuff here, like how much is complete? You know, do you want it to say complete? Do you want it to say done? What do you want it to say? Do you want to call them lessons? Do you want to call them topics? All that stuff. You have the ability to change all of that stuff here. When you change it here, it'll change it for the entire course. Collaborators. These, because it's a web-based program, anybody that has access to Articulate 360 Rise that has a license could be a collaborator. So you might you could enter an email name in here and put them as an as a course author. Let's see here. You have the ability to determine what kind of authorization you're giving that person. And you can build several of these and whoever is the owner owns that course. So you can build it, put another collaborator on there, let them be like the lead and then they can take course ownership and delete you off of it. And then you don't have to worry about it again, right? So that's how you can pass courses back and forth to different people. 